Hello friends, today we are going to see one of the sorting algorithms which is bubble sort. Bubble sort is one of the easiest sorting algorithms to implement but it might not be an efficient algorithm. So let's take a look at the various frequently used sorting algorithms. Quick sort, merge sort, insertion sort and then um, bucket sort, radix sort or the frequently used algorithms. And if you see, um, the red color denotes that it is a bad performing algorithm and the green represents it is a better performing algorithm. So if we look at the time complexity, bubble sort was an average case as O of n square, which is very bad um, because that is one of the worst um, time complexity that you could see for a sorting algorithm. But the best case is omega of n, which is a better compared to other algorithms, but you might not always have the list in a sorted order. So, and then the space complexity is O of 1, which is great compared to other algorithms, but um, since the bubble sort is going to use only one variable, constant variable, always to help in swapping the elements. So let's take a look at the algorithm part for this. So we are going to have two nested loops. So the first loop is going to iterate over the list from the start to the end, which is 0 to n. n is the length of the list. And then the inner loop is going to iterate over 0 to n minus i minus 1. Why do we have like n minus i minus 1 is because when the first iteration completes, the largest element would be pushed to the rightmost end of the array. So in the next iteration, we don't need to consider that element. So let's look at what happens in the second inner loop. In the second inner loop, there is an if class which compares the current element with the next element. If the current element is greater than the next element, then we would swap it. And this iteration keeps continuing until we exhaust all the elements in the array and then we would return the list. So let's take an example. So this example has seven elements and the elements are in jumbled order 4, 3, 5, 2, 6, 1, 7. So when I represent uh, two blocks with yellow color which means we are going to consider those elements for swapping and if an element is represented with green then it means that it has already attained the spot in which it has to be placed of the result. So let's consider. The first time in the iteration, we are going to consider the first two elements, 4 and 3. 4 is greater than 3. So in that case, we have to do a swap, 3 comma 4. And then we are going to consider the next two elements. So the, now the next two elements are 4 and 5. 4 is not greater than 5, so we don't do any swapping. We continue. Now we compare 5 and 2, 5 is greater than 2, so we do the swap and then we compare 5 and 6, no swap required and then we compare 6 and 1, 6 is greater than 1, so we are going to do a swap, 1 comma 6 and then we are going to consider 6 and 7 and then there is no swap required, so it remains the same. And then this is the end of the iteration 1 and we know that the 7 is the largest element of this entire list. And Rightly, it has been placed in the rightmost end of the array. So this element need not be compared in our next iteration. So in iteration number two, we continue the same logic. We compare the first two elements, three and four, and there is no swap required. And then we compare four and two. Four is greater than two, so a swap happens. And then we compare four and five. There is no swap required. And then five and one, Yes, we need a swap, so it is 1 and 5, and then we compare 5 and 6, no swap required, and then in the second iteration, the second element from the rightmost is considered as a locked element since we don't need to consider it anymore. Similarly for iteration 3, we are comparing the first two elements, and then uh, 3 is greater than 2, so we swap 2 and 3, and then we compare 3 and 4, no swap required, 4 and 1, yes, swap is required, and then 4 and 5, no swap required. And then 5 is now at the correct place. Now in iteration 4, same, 2, 3, no swap. 3, 1, swap is required. And then 3, 4, no swap required. 
and then the iteration file two one yes a swap is required one two and then in the next step, iteration we are comparing two and three so no swap required so we are locking that three and the last iteration we are comparing one and two that is no swap required so this is the final output so now if you see the list is in a sorted order one two three four five six seven that's our solution so how do you implement this solution in java so you define a class called as bubble sort and then you have a method bubble sort which takes in an integer array and we are going to get the length of the array and then store it in size variable and then as we saw in the algorithm we are going to have two for loops so the first for loop is for walking over the array and the second for loop is for comparing the elements so in the first for loop we are going to have i equal to 0 and i less than size minus 1 since our array starts with index 0 we have to do a minus 1 here otherwise we would get array out of bounds and then in the for loop in the inner for loop we have for in j equal to 0 j less than size i minus 1 and then we compare the elements if array of j is greater than array of j plus 1 then here is where the temporary variable is being used to swap the element j and j plus 1 and this is why we have a space complexity of o of 1 because this is the same variable that is being utilized for the entire program okay so there is an optimized way to have this algorithm so what is the optimization that you can do here so for example if the elements are already in sorted order the algorithm would not know that it is already sorted and it would keep comparing the elements until it exhausts the list but we don't want to do that it is not efficient since the array is already sorted so what we are going to do is we are going to introduce a variable called as swap which is a boolean variable so in this one what we are going to do is same uh, two iteration over the list the first iteration is list o to n as i and then we are going to have a variable called as swap and then in the inner loop we are going to iterate over 0 to n minus i minus 1 as j and then we are going to compare the elements and if we swap we are going to mark the swap equal to false but in this entire inner iteration if we don't find any elements to swap then it means that we all the elements are already in a sorted order so we don't have to keep continuing the loop we would we can break from it which is the reason we are having the swap boolean set to true here and if you don't find anything to swap after this iteration we check for the swap value and if it is true we break and we come out of it so we don't keep continuing the outer loop from 0 to n and then we return the list let's see an example so this list is already in a sorted order so the first two elements 1 and 2 1 is less than 2 so no swap required 2 and 3 no swap required 3 and 4 no swap 4 and 5 no swap 5 and 6 no swap 6 and 7 no swap so since in the inner loop we didn't have any swap happening we don't need to continue if we haven't introduced the swap variable then we would have gone to the iteration 2 where we would have marked the 7 as a locked element and then we would have kept comparing again and again so we would have gone for at least 6 iteration but in this case in our very first iteration we would be able to figure out that the array is in a sorted order and we can break the loop so let's see the solution in python so we are defining the bubble sort method and we are going to have two for loops first for loop is going to run from range of 0 to length of the array and then we are going to have a swapped variable initialized to true and then in the inner loop we are going to iterate from 0 to length of array minus i minus 1 and we are comparing the adjacent elements with array of j and array of j plus 1 and if array of j is greater than array of j plus 1 then we are going to do the swap if the swap happens we mark the swap variable as false if no swap happens then we check for the swap variable and then we break out of the loop as we see here so we are having two for loops 
So because of this, the time complexity comes to O of n square. And then um, that space complexity, as we saw, we were using one temporary variable because of which the space complexity is always constant. Thanks for watching this video. And if you like to learn about the other sorting algorithms, then please subscribe for this channel.